Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So, the last video we talked a little bit about WLED. Today we're going to go a little further with it. We're going to look at actually flashing it onto this D1 Mini ESP 8266. And then we are going to look at what it looks like on a panel, a ring, and the, the ring will be very similar to the, a string of lights. And I'll show you kind of a couple of the things it does. So th this will be the video you need to get started with just an ESP8266. And this will work with any ESP8266. And this, these same instructions will work with an ESP32. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get the ESP8266 flashed. And to do so, what we're going to do is we're going to plug it into our computers, go ahead and hold the reset button. It goes into boot mode. The LED shows that it's connected. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over to this website here. It's install.wled.me. And I will link this down in the description. But one thing you do need to have before you run this is you do need to make sure you have your CH340 driver. I'll link this down in the description as well. This is directly from the Wemo site. It makes it so that you can actually flash things to your uh, chip. I've had a handful of them that I have been unable to flash because I didn't have this. After installing this driver, everything worked. So anyway, WLED is super simple to install. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick just the most current release, so 0 0.13.3, and we're going to hit install. Then it'll give us the option to select the, US, the port that this is installed in. If you have multiple, then you need to go into your... Uh, device manager and figure out exactly which one you need to pick. But this is the only thing I have plugged in that's showing up, so I know it's correct. This does need to be done in a uh, Chrome browser. I think it can be done in Edge as well. My daily driver browser is Brave and it doesn't work in Brave, but it does work in Chrome. So you'll hit connect. Okay, so I just went through all this. If you have had your drivers installed for a little while, it's possible you need to uninstall the device. To do so, what I did, is I went to the device manager, went to the device, right click, uninstall device, and then check this box for attempt to remove driver for the device. Unplug the device and plug it back in holding the button and then everything works. So to continue to get WLED installed, going to pick the release we want and hit install, hit the USB COM8, which is what I have it plugged into, connect. It'll start going through all of this. We're going to reset this one. So that's what it'll look like after you've already got everything installed. I think I have an older version on this. Let's go ahead and just get it reset and reinstall the new WLED. So this will take just a quick minute. Okay, so once it's all done, it'll ask you for your network's name. So you'll put that in, put the password to your network, just so it'll automatically connect. So after that's all said and done, we move to the app and to getting it all wired up. So we'll get it over here on the breadboard. Just get it all plugged in. And then let's go ahead and get it powered on. So to do so, we need to connect 
ground to ground and five volt to five volt. Now you can go to your WLED app. We'll add a new device. Discover lights. It found one, which is most likely this one. We'll hit the check mark. So now we need to go into here, go to configure, LED preferences, output, length. Let's start with the ring, which I believe it's like 40 lights. So we're going to put the length here to 40. And then GPIO D2 should be fine. So we'll go ahead and use D2. And we will save. So after you get that set up, we chose D2 and what we need to do is on your LEDs, you need to do your DI pin, which is data in. You need to put that on the, the GPIO pin we just picked, which we chose D2. And then ground, I mean power, and ground your LEDs. I don't know if there's something weird about the uh, GPIO header naming on the D1 Mini, but I chose GPIO 4, but I'm plugged into D2. So my thought, D2 should be GPIO 2. But I changed the settings to GPIO 4, and it works. So anyway, let's get some of these lights turned down. So we can kind of see the LEDs a little better. Alright, so my computer decided to stop working, so we're going to switch over to a different camera, i.e. my cell phone. So this is what it looks like once we get it all, everything all connected. We get into this other phone over here. So now that we've got the ring connected, we can kind of see everything's working. Let's look at some of the effects. Let's just go to... See what candle multi looks like. Doesn't look like it changed a whole lot. Chase random. There we go. So you can kind of see some of the stuff going on. So now let's get these lights turned back on. I'll show you. Let's wire it for this LED panel. And it's all going to be wired the same way as what we just wired it. So we're going to take red, go to 5 volt, ground, and D4. So we have it set, and I want to show you real quick. So 5 volt, ground, and DIN, or digital in. So those are what we're plugging in. 5 volt goes to 5 volt, ground goes to ground, and DIN goes to GPIO that you've called out. And this one we called out GPIO 4 or D2. So anyway, so we got the panel all set up. Or plugged in. You can see it's only using, should be right at 40 LEDs. So what we want to go to now is config, 
LED preferences. I'm going to change the length to 256. And we'll save that. And now you see we're using the full thing. It already looks like it's set up well. But let's go to 2D configuration. It's set up for strip, but we want to set it up for matrix. So it's one panel, it's 8 by 32 for this particular panel. And it is serpentine. First panel is the top left, that's correct. And save. All right. Let's go back in here. So it just defaulted back to a solid. So let's go back to effects and look at the black hole. So we'll get these lights turned off again so we can kind of see it a little better. This is the black hole effect. You can kind of see how it spirals. It's all spiraling around this center. Really cool effect. If you look on these things, you can also see, so like right next to the black hole, it has what kind of looks like a matrix. So you'll know that that works with matrices. See, look at blobs. So blobs works with matrices too. Color burst. All right, let's look at a few other options that are matrix fan friendly. We got crazy bees. Just imagine having multiple of these all put together in one big panel, which I'll probably do in a video at some point. I think that'd be a really cool project do like say 32 by 32 square or like a 64 by 32 or something. I think it'd be really cool. So the distortion waves, you got DNA, there's the matrix. So I'm noticing everything's fallen to the side. So to fix that, we'll go back into config, 2D configuration. So what we did wrong, now that I'm seeing it, is we did the dimensions backwards. So because we want it this way, we did, we're gonna do 32 wide, which is what we should have done, and eight high. Save that. There we go. So if you didn't see what I changed, because we did change the orientation, we did need to change the orientation to vertical. So when we had it eight by 32, it needed to be horizontal, but now that it's 32 by eight, it needs to be vertical. Back to effects. So we did matrix already. Meatballs. So it's kind of cool. Octopus. So it's another kind of just swirly thing. Scrolling text, this is one I wanted to see or show. So it shows the date, August 11th, and I believe it'll show the time as well, 2023. 3.17.45. So the time is way off on it. I'm not sure where it pulls the time from. If it's a setting that I need to change in WLED or some something, 
but the time zone is off. So that's it for this episode of WLED. I showed you how to get everything connected. Let's get one of these lights back on. I got we got the ESP 8266 D1 Mini connected to both just a standard light ring and an LED matrix. I will include all of these parts and their Amazon listings in the description below. You can see all of this next episode or next video I do on WLED. It'll be using the ESP32 version of the D1. And we will be using a, micro, a digital microphone with it as well to make a sound reactive LED panel. So thanks for tuning in. Again, all of this information is in the uh, description. If you like the video, like it. If you like my channel, please subscribe. And if you would like some script kitty stickers or shirts, go check out my website, 463n7.io link is also down in the description. I'd like to thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.